Hey guys, what is up and welcome back to the channel. In this video, I am going to be testing all of your most highly requested games that you asked for in the comment section of my last video on this Nintendo Switch emulator. As well as that, I'm also going to be including some very, very awesome rendering improvements that I myself thought merited inclusion in this compatibility guide. Some of the biggest games we're going to be taking a look at include The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, Kirby Star Allies, Super Mario Party and Pokemon Quest. If there's a game that I have not covered either in this video or my video from just two days ago, please let me know down below in a comment and as always, if I can get access to that game, I will test it absolutely no problem. So that's about enough of this introduction, let's get this compatibility guide started. So here in Breath of the Wild, you can very clearly see that the developers have fixed a but ton of rendering bugs that were present in the game only three or four days ago. Now in my video I covered this game about two days ago but even since then we have seen a significant uptick in not only the performance in the open world but also in the rendering quality. Now while you are going to see that we still have this weird shadow rendering bug and this isn't going to go away until these shadows are completely fixed but one of the lead developers is in fact working on these shadows at this very moment in time. You'll also notice that in a very similar circumstance to what happened on a CMU emulator, none of the water outside of some of the more physically based rendered areas like Hyrule Castle is currently being rendered. This means that you can pretty much run through any of the water sources in the game and just pick up fish or any of the treasures that are below. You can also see that we now have the fog that surrounds the Great Plateau being rendered, while it is obviously very, very buggily being rendered, it is still being rendered and that is good to see. Now, aside from the fact that none of the water is being rendered and the fact that the shadows are completely broken, the most obvious of these rendering bugs is the fact that the ground is not being correctly rendered at all. Now, as I said, this game is fairly seriously being worked on by several developers of this emulator and hopefully we will see even more improvements, especially so considering the improvements we have already seen in the last two weeks. Hopefully we can get these shadow and vertex explosion issues fixed. Hopefully we'll see the exact same circumstance in Breath of the Wild as we saw in Super Mario Odyssey when all of its shadow and vertex issues were solved. In that game, if you weren't aware, when those issues were solved, we saw a dramatic improvement in not only performance but obviously in render quality. In the last two to three days of development alone, we have seen all of these trees now be correctly rendered, these rocks are now correctly rendered, and all of these little stone areas are now also being correctly rendered also. Moving swiftly on, let's take a look at yet another Nintendo Switch exclusive game now booting on this emulator. Let's take a look at Super Mario Party. So this game has been booting for quite a while on this emulator, however it was very very buggy and would pretty much crash at any point in time just after this screen. However it is now progressing into this initial splash screen where it says obviously Super Mario Party and not only that but it also progresses into its next screen where you're able to select whether you're going to be using it in System Link with other Nintendo Switch consoles or if you're going to be playing it locally in 1, 2, three or four player mode. Now unfortunately at this point in time on the emulator if you try to select any one of these different combinations and hit the OK button you are just going to crash the game and it's just not going to be able to proceed any further. Hopefully this game can see improved compatibility especially so if we see some kind of motion source implementation added to Yuzu. Next up let's move back to the Zelda franchise and take a look at Hyrule Warriors booting in Yuzu. Now this is another title that has been booting for quite some time, however it has seen a fairly significant increase in its stability at least on the emulator. You can see that it now correctly renders all of these different splash screens. You can also see that it successfully loads into its initial menus and navigation is basically perfect locked at 60 frames per second. When we go to load into legend mode it is going to give you a black screen. The reason it gives you a black screen is because it doesn't currently render its cutscenes. 
You are however able to press the plus button and skip these cutscenes and get into this initial loading screen. Now unfortunately again in this title as soon as you get past the loading bar it's going to ask you to press plus and then once you press plus on your controller or your emulated controller it's just going to softlock or crash the emulator. Hopefully Hyrule Warriors will be another game that can get much better compatibility in this emulator in the coming weeks and months. Let's move quickly along to our next title for this video, Mario Tennis Aces. So in Mario Tennis Aces, on this emulator at least at this point in time, it does in fact boot and get to its initial launch splash screen. As with the fonts in the menu screens in Super Mario Odyssey and the entirety of the game of Pokemon Let's Go, these fonts are not being correctly rendered and unfortunately when you press L and R, even though the inputs do work, it's just going to crash or softlock the emulator. Hopefully, again, with this game we'll be able to see better compatibility as time goes by. Next up we have a game that tons and tons of you requested in my previous compatibility video, let's take a look at Kirby Star Allies. So in this title we have yet another game that has seen significant not only performance but 3D rendering improvements. In previous versions of the emulator the performance in these 3D rendered menus would be probably around 15 to 25 frames per second whereas right now you can see that we are easily staying well within 50 and usually locked to 60 frames per second. Now unfortunately when you go to load into story mode as with Hyrule Warriors and many other games we've already covered, these cutscenes are unfortunately not working at this point in time. Now once you actually get into the level select area you're also going to see that the graphics are extremely corrupted. Initially it's going to look like a completely blacked out mess but when you move around the area you will indeed see that some of the graphics are at least being rendered correctly. This makes it a little bit difficult to actually get into some of these levels and once again when we get through all of these transitional areas which are themselves rendered correctly you're going to see that the in-game graphics are not exactly up to scratch. So while performance wise it's not really that terrible, it generally stays somewhere between 20 and 45 frames per second and while most of the actions are correctly working this game is currently not playable in this kind of state. Let's quickly move on to our next title in this compatibility video, let's take a look at another game that has seen significant improvement to its 3D rendering and performance, Bayonetta 1. So in previous compatibility videos you would have seen that Bayonetta 1 was indeed booting and in some way usable on this emulator and while the menus did correctly work it was pretty much unplayable due to the fact that absolutely no 3D graphics were rendered in game at all. All of this has changed in the very latest Yuzu Canary version where as you can see in the gameplay right now we have some of the 3D models rendering and we are actually able to go into gameplay. Bayonetta is actually progressing in pretty much the exact same fashion as Bayonetta 2 did where initially when it loaded into game all of its 3D models were completely broken just like you can see these are right now while Bayonetta 1 is still completely broken at least in relation to how it performs and how its 3D models are rendering Bayonetta 2 is now basically rendered and performing perfectly on this emulator. Performance wise in gameplay this title runs generally anywhere between around 9 and 20 frames per second. It's not perfect but hopefully in the coming weeks and months we will see improvement not only to its performance but also to its render quality. Moving swiftly on once again let's take a look at our next title Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition. Many of you would remember this title on this emulator due to the fact that it is one of the first games that ever booted day zero or day one. Performance and render quality wise this game is now performing very very well and as you can see in our frame rate counter in the bottom of the window we are generally remaining well over the target of 30 frames per second in this game at all times. Unfortunately at this point in time Final Fantasy XV Pocket Edition as with another title Pokemon Quest we're going to be covering later on suffers with this weird issue where your thumbsticks dead zones are not being correctly detected basically meaning that your characters are just going to be running in random directions at all times completely out of your control. 
Now you can counter this by just mapping left, right, up and down to those different inputs on your left thumbstick for movement, but this comes with a fairly big caveat in the fact that you completely lose all analog input and can only move in those directions. So performance wise it is fairly good, in the open world it generally stays as I said above 30 frames per second and render quality wise it's pretty good, however unfortunately as with games like Pokemon Let's Go and Bayonetta 2 this game is also prone to random or RNG crashing. This basically means that at any point in time in gameplay it can just freeze and softlock and the fact that this game doesn't have frequent autosaves basically means that it is just a very very frustrating experience. These weird flashing images that you may be seeing in gameplay can actually be fixed if you just fix your frame rate to 50% speed. Unfortunately, even doing this isn't enough to stop these random crashes, so this game remains in the unplayable category. Okay, so let's move on to our next title, and one that I myself would consider absolutely essential buying for the Nintendo Switch itself. Let's take a look at LEGO Harry Potter The Collection. With this game we have another title that is recently booting, well I wouldn't exactly consider it booting, it generally just comes to this screen where you're able to select between years 1 to 4 and then years 5 to 7. Unfortunately at this point in time selecting either of these titles or year categories is just going to softlock and crash the emulator. Ok, on to our next title, let's take a quick look at Pokemon Quest. So with this game we have a very very strange title especially so for this emulator at this point in time. Now while it does indeed boot and perform and render pretty much exactly as it does on the Nintendo Switch, there are some fairly severe bugs that stop it from being very playable on the emulator. One of these bugs happens at the very start of the game where your drone is going to crash and you're going to have to rename it. So it's going to go through this sequence, it's going to do all of this dialogue and then it's going to ask you to input the new name of your drone once it has actually been rebooted. So you're going to see here that the applet for the keyboard is going to pop up. Oddly enough if you enter any name and hit OK or if you just close this applet it's just going to completely crash the game. What you need to do is just to to drag the applet off screen and then using your left thumbstick you need to select this yes button, another software keyboard is going to pop up, you just want to click yes again and then it's just going to enter a default name and you're going to be able to proceed into gameplay. Now as I said this game is very very buggy especially so in relation to how it handles touch controls and since you have to control this little hand with your left thumbstick and as with Final Fantasy 15 we have this dreaded dead zone issue, this game is pretty much unplayable at this point in time, you'll just see exactly how playable it is when you try to highlight any of these Pokemon, it's actually crazy hard just to target one single small section of the screen. So you can see, I did manage to actually select Bulbasaur, but you're going to see that when I actually get into the gameplay section of this game, it becomes basically impossibly unplayable, especially so if you need to do any kind of quick inputs. So while the game is performing and rendering basically perfect, all of these input related issues are stopping it from being a playable experience. Hopefully once they fix any of the touchscreen related input problems and indeed fix the dead zone issues that we're having with the left and right thumbsticks, this game will be a much much more playable experience on Yuzu Emulator. So as I always say guys, if there are any games that you want me to test for compatibility on this Switch emulator, please please do let me know down below in the comment section of this video. Literally any game you could possibly request, regardless of how obscure it is, if I can get my hands on it, I will test it for compatibility and include it in one of these compatibility guides. As always, if you want to help with the development of Yuzu Emulator, you can find a link to their Patreon down in the description of this video. Please please do head over there and pledge your support, these guys are super awesome developers. So once again guys, cheers for checking out this video, remember to like it if you liked it, dislike it if you didn't, and as always, subscribe to the channel if you want to see all future videos from me.